Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew coming to you from rainy Costa Rica. Today's topic, topic is going to be when you reach the point of no return. Think about that for a minute. Guys, if you like the content, please subscribe. So you're surfing, you're paddling out to the point break. You're caught in no man's land. You're not sure should you continue to go forward and get out to the point break or should you head back to the shore because there's a huge wave coming at you. What's gonna happen? You have to figure that out. You're at the point of no return. My hope is you continue paddling. You duck underneath the wave, you reach the point break, you set up, you ride this next wave back to the, the beach and you have a great afternoon surfing. Having said that, in the narcissistic relationship, the point of no return is similar to this. You see, you have given the narcissist all of your attention. You've given it, given it to a fault. And there comes a moment in time when you reach the breaking point or the point of no return. And what that means is you stand up for yourself and you don't tolerate the poor behavior any longer and you don't give them your attention. You're on to them, you understand who they are and you understand that they don't benefit you. Most importantly, my hope is you've identified them as a toxic person, perhaps even a narcissist. But when you reach the point of no return or the breaking point, this is when you cannot go backwards. You see, you've exhausted all of your avenues of resources. You've given your time, your money, your energy, your effort, your love, your empathy, everything you have, perhaps your social circle. You've been pushed to the breaking point, hence the point of no return. This is when you close the door on the narcissist. And my hope is you exit the narcissistic fog and you're beginning to get the education and you're understanding that this person is a toxic individual. They never wanted to build you up. What they wanted to do was tear you down. Now, having said that, the point of no return, when you reach this, this means you've crossed the line. There's no going back. You have seen through the mask. You've made a decision to move forward. You can't unsee what you have seen. And when you reach the point of no return, it's, it's like I said, using the surfing analogy, you have one, one decision to make. It's get crushed by that wave or duck underneath it, get through it, get out to the point break and here you are. Now, in the narcissistic relationship, remember, the narcissist wanted you paddling in no man's land or the narcissistic fog. Using the surfing analogy, they wanted you in no man's land. Should I go backwards? Should I go forward? I don't know. That's where they wanted you because that's where you were the least safe and that's where they could cause all the destruction with you. Just like that huge wave that was coming at you, that was the narcissist. Do I go backwards? Do I go forward? I don't know, I'm trapped. And eventually that wave capsizes on you and it capsizes on you over and over and over again. Virtually each and every day while you're in the narcissistic relationship, that's what happens. And when that happens, you understand that, wow, I am drowning in this ocean where I'm located, is it's called no man's land. I need to either get to the shore or I need to paddle out because I've certainly reached the breaking point or the point of no return. It is not until you get discarded most times or if you're fortunate enough to exit the relationship yourself that you understand that you need to get out of the relationship permanently, which means you don't accept a Hoover. You don't go back to the narcissist. You don't look to them for closure. Remember, the narcissist will never give you closure. They want you in that no man's land in the ocean using that analogy. They want you not swimming, let's put it that way. They want you treading for your life. And I'm not trying to be dramatic, this is how they want you, it's where they want you, it's where they placed you. So when you understand all these things and you put the context of your relationship together and you understand and recognize what narcissism is, more importantly, you understand this person never had your best interest at heart and they sincerely just wanted to crush you they wanted to extract all of your resources from you. When you get that, that's when you exit the relationship or you begin your first steps on the healing path, moving forward each and every day, learning, growing, teaching, becoming awakened and aware. And you understand that in fact, it's hard to wrap your head around narcissism in the very beginning, how someone could want to tear you down rather than build you up, how someone could future fake with you, how someone could wear a mask and manipulate you make you fall in love with them when in fact they never fell in love with you. All they wanted was for you to become attached to them so they could extract more and more resources from you. The whole time you're working harder and harder, paddling on that surfboard trying to get, it, get out to the break when in fact they were actually pulling you backwards. That's exactly how it is. Remember what you were doing for the narcissist. Think of all the list of things you were doing. I'm certain you were planning things, you were paying for things, you were rescheduling things, you are shifting your whole life 
and or priorities around to accommodate the narcissist. Did they ever accommodate you? They didn't unless what? That's right, unless it benefited them. So again, you could have a couple days going really well in the relationship when you were with the narcissist. And think, think really think back about this. Think about this and make comments if it resonates with you. You'd have a couple good days and then all of a sudden you're like, wow, things are getting better. I'm, I'm happy and this person's exactly what I thought they were. Maybe it's a boss, they're not screaming at me today. They're not having a rage fit. And then lo and behold, things are too good. And what happens? Boom, there you go. You get devalued again. You experience the rage fit. You're told what a poor employee you are and how you're not performing up to expectations when in fact you're doing the job of two or three, four people. The narcissist, remember, they're a bully and a coward and they want you not believing in yourself. That is why so frequently when the narcissist isolates you, let's take the workplace bully. When the narcissist isolates you, they want you believing that it's just you, that they singled you out for a poor, for a poor performer, performance. When in fact, that's not you. It's all the other people that they're hammering behind the scenes too. The thing is they isolate everybody and they, they want you, the individual watching the video, and again, thank you very much for being here. They want you believing that you're not living up to expectations. It's kind of like, let's use a, a basketball analogy. You know, in basketball, if you guys follow basketball, I used to, I don't anymore, but the point is there's five people on a team and there's always a, an award for the sixth man. What the sixth man is, is or person, is the person that comes in and substitutes the most for one of the other five because they're, they're the, the sixth best player on the team. And the sixth best player on the team is always chomping at the bit to become a starter in the starting five on a basketball team. But the sixth man knows his role or her role and they know exactly that in time, they, they actually could crack the starting lineup if they work a little bit harder, but they're on that hamster wheel. And that's why it's called the sixth man or sixth woman, whoever it is. I hope you understand that. That's what the narcissist wants. They want you not believing in yourself, not living up to expectations. That's why you continue to work harder and harder for the narcissist. That's why you doubt yourself. That's why you become an extension of them. That's why you are completely isolated. That's why post-narcissistic relationship, when the smear campaign is fully underway and you find out who your real friends are, and believe me, they will be few and far between, no matter how long you've known them, that's when the narcissist has isolated you even more because throughout the whole relationship, they've been devaluing you to yourself in, in front of you when, when you didn't even know what devaluation was. And they've been work, making you work on the hamster wheel, but they've been telling other people about your poor performance. Again, it doesn't have to be a business relationship. It could be a romantic interest. It could be a sibling. It could be a mom, dad, neighbor, coworker, whomever. The point is, the narcissist is always on a cycle looking to manipulate people, unsuspecting individuals who don't have the education on the narcissistic abusive cycle. And that was you for a period of time. It's not you any longer. My hope is you've exited the relationship and you've entered that point of no return, which is when you say to yourself, I need to keep going forward. I need to, I need to get out there. I need to get out to that big wave and I need to ride it into to the coast and I need to be safe. That's what I need to do. But no matter what, I need to get out of no man's land, which is where the waters are frightening. They're deep, they're shark infested. That's where you have the least chance of survival, if you understand my point. Anyone who swims in the ocean, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And my hope is you get the analogy. But that's where the narcissist wanted you, and that's where they want you right now. Keep in mind, the narcissist, they always need supply. They need people to regulate themselves. Whereas you are a healthier individual, you're gonna be introspecting, learning about yourself, becoming awakened and aware. What's the narcissist going to be doing? This is post-narcissistic relationship, by the way. What they're gonna be doing is looking to extract resources from other unsuspecting individuals. It's called the narcissistic abusive cycle and the sooner you exit it, the better off you are. Again, the path is to go no contact, block, delete all fly monkeys and remove people associated with the narcissist. That's the path. It is the final nail in the coffin. It's when you close the chapter on the narcissistic relationship and you begin placing your energy into yourself. Again, I mentioned frequently on the channel where you place your attention is where you place your energy. It's completely true. Example again, when you were in the narcissistic relationship, where was your attention and energy going? That's right, it was going on maintaining the relationship, trying to get back to that love bomb slash euphoric stage or some semblance of a peaceful environment. You never quite got there, did you? You didn't, why? Because you were already being devalued and your replacement was already being groomed for when you were discarded or for when the relationship ended. Or perhaps you were in a long-term narcissistic relationship, perhaps you're even in one right now and you can't get out and you know the poor behavior of the narcissist. It just gets worse over time, worse with age. You see, the narcissist doesn't introspect and grow. They just fine tune and hone their skills of manipulation, lies, destruction, and devastation to get other unsuspecting individuals. It's what they do, it's their nature. It's exactly what they do. So guys, 
that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from beautiful Costa Rica. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon. Stay true. Stay blessed. Continue to become awakened and aware and understand you are the priority. You come first, second, and third. And when you reach the point of no return, that, that expression is called what it is for a reason. It means you're, there's no going back now. You have to go forward. You have to save yourself. You have to be there for yourself. You have to build yourself back up. And with the, my hope is the community and the, the people around you are there to support you. God bless you no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone. Remember that. You are not alone. I love you. Have a great afternoon. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Enjoy, enjoy yourselves, guys. Bye-bye.